Good morning and welcome to the Mumbles Ministry area service for the fourth Sunday of Lent, which of course is popularly known as Mothering Sunday. Um, it is also known as Laetare Sunday because the antiphon that the choir would often sing at the beginning of a service or maybe during communion was Laetare Jerusalem, Rejoice Jerusalem. It was very much seen a, as a little break almost in the middle of people's Lenten abstinence. Indeed, there are some clergy who will wear pink vestments on the fourth Sunday of Lent. Not me. Um, <clears throat> Nonetheless, it then became, after a period of time, a Sunday where people would return to their mother, which in that case was probably meant the mother church, maybe the cathedral they would go to to worship in, or the main church in an area. Um, and Mothering Sunday was also, a little bit more recently, a Sunday when people who were in service, who were working for other people in their, in their stately homes or whatever, would be allowed to return to their own homes, probably to go to church with their own families, and they would take with them simnel cake uh, uh, as a present for their mothers. Uh, there is, in fact, Simnel cake even now being sold in the takeaway, the, uh, the takeaway cafe next door to the church here. Rejoice Jerusalem and all who love her. Be joyful, all who were in mourning. Exult and be satisfied by her consoling love. My brothers and sisters, we gather with joy and greet one another in the name of the Lord, grateful for the many ways in which we've been nurtured in God's love. From our mother's arms, God has blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love. Through our baptism, we have been born into the life of God's family, the church, and known God's loving care. Jesus himself was nursed by a loving mother and cradled within a human family through which he grew in stature and wisdom, in favour with God and humankind. His mother Mary has given us an example of loving service and attentiveness to her son and saviour. Today our gathering is of course different because normally it would be brightened by the presence of those who've come home to be with their families or who've returned to this place, this church, because they've experienced the love of God through the care and support of God's family, the church. But we nonetheless remember them and we pray for those for whom we love and those who love this place. And we are mindful too of those whose mothers have died, but who are remembered with gratitude and love. We commend them anew to God's loving embrace. May our time together be filled with many blessings, and may the Holy Spirit kindle in our hearts the fire of God's love. We meet as a family in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of God, who is full of compassion and tenderness, and who calls us back with all our heart, be with you all. Heavenly Father, all hearts are open to you. No secrets are hidden from you. Purify us with the fire of your Holy Spirit, that we may love and worship you faithfully, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Believing in him, let us turn to him in humility, that we may know the freedom his forgiveness brings. Let us confess our forgetfulness of the needs of the poor and repent of the ways in which we waste the resources of the world. God has blessed us, but still God's children go hungry. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God has blessed us, 
But still the poor cry out for justice. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. God has blessed us, but still we see inequality and oppression in the earth. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, You shall love the Lord our God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And you shall love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And so, let us confess our sins together as we say, Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us in his way, to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin. Strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now have the prayer and readings for Mothering Sunday. God of compassion, whose son Jesus Christ, the child of Mary, shared the life of a home in Nazareth and on the cross drew the whole human family to himself. Strengthen us in our daily living, that in joy and in sorrow we may know the power of your presence to bind together and to heal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. This is a reading from the letter to the Colossians. As God's chosen one, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts sing psalms, hymns and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the reading it tells us that with gratitude in your hearts we should sing psalms, hymns and spiritual God songs to God. Here is our first hymn from our virtual choir.
to the Gospel of Christ according to St Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. And a sword will pierce your own soul too. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. There's always a, a little bit of uncertainty as to what today is called. If you go into many shops, you'll find Mother's Day cards. And nothing particularly wrong in that. I think particularly the, the concept of Mother's Day is something which came at the beginning of the last century from America. Mothering Sunday, however, though, personally, is something which I feel it's good and right that we continue to call it. Traditionally, a sermon on Mothering Sunday will talk about Mary, the mother of our Lord Jesus, that God himself, as a human being, has had an earthly home, like all of us, and an earthly mother. Also that the church is meant to be a, a, like a mother to us, a, an in place of warmth and embrace. Also, I think it very important to remember that what we hold dear in the whole concept of motherhood is something that hopefully, and I pray for everyone, is something they do get from their mother, but it's sometimes something that we also get from other people as well. For some people, of course, they do not know their mother. Maybe their mother uh, had them adopted or they died in childbirth or all kinds of things. For some people, sadly, maybe their mother is not able to fulfill all the, the aspirations and hopes that we would have for people's mothers. But as we come together on this Sunday, we are called to think about those things which are so precious to us, to our formation as human beings. Of course, from our mother, we are, our, our physical nature comes to such a great extent, does it not? but also for Jesus, the care, the nurture, the warmth that he had for Mary was vital to him for all that he was, the Son of God. He needed parents who were there for him to teach him, to protect him, to take him away into Egypt in order that he was not slain with all those other poor children by Herod. On Mothering Sunday, I'm sure it's right that for all of us as we step back, and hopefully it is with, with joy and devotion and love that we remember our own physical mothers. But also it is a time to remember those characteristics that are so vital and important in giving us the strength, the wisdom, the insight, the courage, the self-esteem, the security that enables us to blossom and to be aware that it may very well be that we are called to seek to give those and to enable people to blossom who are not our own children, of whom we are not the mother. And of course that's where the whole idea of the church being the family coming together should be so important. In every church throughout the world, they should be places of welcome and warmth, of security, where people feel that they are affirmed, where maybe the things that have happened to people, the things that have, have not been there or right for people, can be addressed and healed and put right. Mothering Sunday is surely a time to stop 
and to remind ourselves of what is so desperately important for human beings. And maybe as hopefully we come towards the end of this terribly isolating time, we may have a clearer idea of the things that really, really matter. The people who do make our life worthwhile and worth living. The people who do give us meaning and purpose. The people who are there to listen and to love us and to enable us to face our problems, to flourish, to grow, to overcome them and to move forward. Mothering Sunday, many of the qualities that we celebrate today, yes, I hope you have found them in your mother. But we need to remember to thank God for all those who give us those things which enable us to grow and to become whom God created us to be. Not least remembering God's Spirit which he freely sends upon us that we need to ask for it because we need to grow. We need our hurts to be healed our sins to be forgiven and we need to have God's Spirit to enable us and to work through us that we may forgive others their sins and be God's ministers of healing and reconciliation, of affirmation, of God's loving embrace to bring God's family together and make this world as he would have it to be. Happy Mothering Sunday. We affirm our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Son, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We now have our prayers and we are delighted that they are shared with us by some of the youngsters of our family here. Today on Mothering Sunday, we give thanks for Mary, the mother of Jesus, who brought him up to know and love God. We pray for our church and give thanks that it has stayed open during the pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who worship here or join with us online through the YouTube services. We give thanks for the Mumbles Music Ministry and the Virtual Choir, which will produce music for the services this year. We give thanks for Mother Earth and all the lovely food we have to eat. And we pray for children in this and other countries who are hungry. We give thanks for all the charities who work so hard to provide food and support for poor families. We remember the work of our local food banks and thank all those who leave food in our church port. We give thanks for our mothers and all they do for us, remembering how much support and help they have given us with homeschooling. We thank you for our happy homes, for the love of parents and grandparents. We pray especially for those who have been separated from the members of their family this year and, and have missed the hugs and kisses. We pray for children who do not have a family to love and care for them. For those who have been orphaned because of illness and death, war and other causes. We pray for those who have no home of their own, remembering all refugees who have had to leave their countries to find a safer place to live. 
We pray for all people in our community who need our prayers at this time. We remember those in care homes who have been unable to see their family. We pray for those who are sad because someone they love is ill or has died. We pray especially for those suffering as a result of the coronavirus. Finally, we pray for ourselves, that we may show love to others just as Jesus showed his love for us. Mercy for Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen! In the early church, one of the first things that they did and saw as being so important was remembering when Jesus appeared to his disciples after his resurrection, he appeared in the upper room and he said, peace, shalom, peace be with you. And when the Christians came together, they would always share the peace, a sign of being a family, an affirming family. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We now have our second hymn. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for ever. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. 
Our Eucharistic prayer this morning is the prayer that comes from the Church in Wales, liturgy, for those where there are a good many children present. And I thought we would use it today because even though they may not sadly be present here with us in, in person, they are indeed, of course, present in our hearts, the children and grandchildren and all those for whom we pray. Thank you, Father, for making us and our wonderful world. Wherever we are in your world, we should always thank you through Jesus, your Son. So with the angels and everyone in heaven, we sing together, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Great and wonderful Father, we remember when Jesus had supper with his friends the night before he died. He took the bread, he thanked you, broke it, gave it to his friends and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body, given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you, gave it to his friends and said, All of you, drink from this cup, because this is my blood, the new promise of God's love. Do this every time you drink it, to remember me. We proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come in glory. And so, loving Father, remembering how dearly Jesus loves us, we should love him too. Send your Holy Spirit, gentle as a dove, on us and on these gifts so that with everyone who eats and drinks this bread and wine, the body and blood of Jesus, we may be full of your life and goodness. Help us all to walk hand in hand with Jesus and live our lives for him. All honour and glory belong to you, Father, through Jesus, your Son, with the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Chosen by God to live as his children, let us pray that we may be obedient to his will. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, for we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Come, 
let us receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, given for us, and feed on him in our hearts. Amen. While we listen to our communion anthem today for this Mothering Sunday, we remember, of course, that normally after communion, we would be giving flowers to the younger members of our congregation to give to their mothers. Of course, that's not possible uh, at the moment, but we thought that it would be good if we took flowers over to Our Lady, the Mother of Jesus, and for all of you who would normally be receiving flowers today, we pray that this for you can stand as us offering flowers to you. Our post-communion prayer. God our Father, we love to give gifts to others. Gifts to say thank you. Gifts to say I love you. Gifts to bring a smile to someone's face. Bless everyone who will receive these flowers. Help them to grow in your love and to know how much we love the things they do for us. We ask this through Jesus the Lord. Amen. to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you, your homes and those you love, today and always. Amen. You are ambassadors for Christ, called to be ministers of reconciliation. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.